Welcome to wearablepersonalcomputer.com. Nope, wasn't snoozing, I was surfing the internet. Hmm, yeah, right, you're thinking. Where's the monitor, desktop box, keyboard, and mouse? Sit back and relax, and I'll show you. To replace the monitor, I chose the Musix VR920 video glasses. Not great, but more than adequate for the process. If you'd like more information, check out musics.com. To replace the desktop box, I chose the Pico 820 from Axiom Tech. Underneath the heatsink, we have an Intel Atom processor running at 1.6 gigahertz. Flip it over, we have my battery pack. Two lithium polymer cells that connect through a voltage regulator. Up here is a very important device, the low voltage alarm. When the alarm goes off, I know it's time to pull the plug. Underneath the battery, two gigabytes of RAM, 32 gigabyte hard drive. The solid state drive is not as fast as a hard disk drive but lower power consumption and no moving parts make it ideal for this application. The spaghetti you see here connects the Wi-Fi, power for the music's glasses, keyboard and mouse to the motherboard. If you'd like more information, visit the folks at orbitmicro.com. Replacing the monitor was relatively easy. Replacing the desktop box took a while. I was never able to find anything suitable to replace the keyboard and mouse. After months of experimenting, I came up with this idea. I call it my sleight of hand trick. Under my thumb is a micro joystick. This is connected to the circuit board, which converts joystick movements into mouse pointer movements. I really like this form of joystick mouse much better than the mouse that you push around on your desktop. Imagine replacing five bulky keyboard keys and shrinking them down to the size of this. This is called a five-way switch. To make it easier to use, I machined some aluminum buttons that fit on the top. The five-way switch briefly works like this. Press down for switch one, pull up for switch two, push left, right for three and four, and then straight down for switch five. By arranging the switches in a staggered fashion, it's possible for one finger to operate two keys. You're looking at a total of 40 switches that are wired to a printed circuit board called a Universal Human Interface Device made by Altamark. The onboard software allows for each switch to have a primary and secondary function. This means, thanks to clever hardware and software, I have the equivalent of 77 keyboard keys and two mouse keys. As you can see in this video, I still have almost complete use of my left hand. My guess is you're thinking, okay, you got a lot of keys, but it looks like a pain to use. I created a long, narrow Word document. The document indicates which switch to push for the key that I want. After several hours of using the on-screen guide, the new way of typing became automatic. Remember, a switch is easily programmed to any key you want. For more information, visit www.u-hid.com. I'd like to end on a historical note. This was a Christmas present to me from my aunt. The year was 1959. 
the pocket transistor radio was all the rage. What made it possible was the introduction of the transistor in mass-produced products. If you look at that little can there, that's the transistor. This item boasts having six transistors. I'd like to compare that with 2009. The 32 gigabyte solid state drive that you're looking at, according to HowStuffWorks.com, within that little square are over 512 million transistors. Tremendous accomplishment in 50 years. I wish there was some way to thank all the engineers, scientists, and production folks that made that possible. Can't wait to see what's coming next. In the meantime, see you on the internet.